So Excellencies, distinguished delegates, participants, and dear colleagues, I would like to welcome you to this virtual launch of the FAO State of Food and Agriculture, SOFA, organized in collaboration with the FAO's Agri-Food Economics Division. I would also like to thank you for taking the time to attend today's session, given your busy schedules. We appreciate your support and interest in FAO's work. My name is Delphine badin -Pelliard. I am Senior Liaison Officer at the FAO Liaison Office in Geneva, and I will moderate today's session. As you may already know, FAO supports its members' efforts to formulate policies conducive to improve food security by strengthening evidence and analysis, providing capacity development and facilitating a neutral dialogue away from the negotiating table. With today's session, we will have the opportunity to elaborate on the theme of the 23, 2023 edition of the SOFA, on revealing the true cost of food to transform agri-food systems. This event, since 1947, FAO States of Food and Agriculture is launched with a different theme. This year, for the first time, the 2023 and 2024 edition of SOPA will continue with the same theme to be further developed in the 2024 edition. This year so far is focused to consider the hidden impact of producing the food needs. True cost accounting allows estimating the cost and benefits of agri-food systems, providing decision makers with the evidence needed for their transformation. Indeed, agri-food systems have become increasingly unsustainable, contrib contributing to climate change and natural resource degradation while failing to provide healthy diets for all. Yet many such impacts, both positive and negative, are now reflected in the market prices of agricultural products. Within agri-food systems, these hidden costs are not known and so go unconsidered in the day-to-day -day decisions that agri-food actors make regarding what to produce, how to produce, how to process, store or market produce, or how to manage unused produce. The report SOFA 2023 makes the case for more regular and detailed analysis by government and the private sector of the hidden or true costs of food systems, followed by action to mitigate these harms. Next year's report will assess the best ways to mitigate them. Last week, our colleagues organized a roundtable discussion on the same topic in Rome, the report was very much appreciated, and the 2024 report, which will target the measures that could be taken, is eagerly awaited. I believe today's, session, today's discussion will also help inform the preparation of SOFA 2024. Now let me introduce our speakers. First, Mr. Andrea Cataneo, Senior Economist at Agri-Food Economics Division at F of FAO and Mr. Alvin Kops, Deputy Assistant Director General at the Swiss Federal Office for Agriculture. Before giving the floor to Andrea, I would like to share some details regarding housekeeping. So this is a virtual event where virtual participation is possible through the Zoom platform, and the event will be in English only with no interpretation. We have reserved some time at the end of the session for questions. And we, we would kindly request you to submit your question in the Q&A module. While posting your questions, please kindly state your name and organization or institution, and we will try to accommodate as many requests as possible as the time permits. After the session, we will share the presentation and recording, as well as relevant sources with all participants. That's all for housekeeping issues. So now I would like to give the floor to Andrea, Andrea will present the SOFA 2023. Please, Andrea, the floor is yours. Thank you, Delphine. Let me share my screen uh, to show the presentation. Uh, share, there we go. You should be seeing my presentation right now. So let me just uh, start by saying that we're very excited about uh, presenting the um, 
Masoka report, as Delphine mentioned, this is in, will be ongoing work into next year, so we're eager to get feedback. Uh, the theme of this year's SOFA is revealing the true cost of food to transform agri-food systems. So it's going towards action, understanding the cost to go uh, towards action. This is a particularly relevant theme because many of the impacts of agri-food systems both positive and negative are not included in the market prices, which really shape the incentives to produce, uh, process, distribute, uh, consume, and dispose of agri-food products. So they are hidden and generally not considered in the day-to-day -day decisions of agri-food actors. That is the challenge. And this gives rise to consequences, both good and bad, that are not always visible. So that's why we find it vital that the impacts of our actions within agri-food systems are made transparent. So the objective of this year's SOFA is to uncover these hidden impacts and contribute to improve their environmental, social, and economic sustainability. As such, this report adopts an approach, which is true cost accounting, also known as TCA, uh, to assess the hidden impacts. Using this approach, the report presents a preliminary quantification of the hidden costs of agri food systems for 154 countries. So uh, we, we stress that these results are preliminary, but we think it's important to put them out there. And the report uses global sources with country level and annual data, and it recognizes the level of uncertainty in these estimates, but it also provides ranges uh, for this uncertainty. So we think that's also quite valuable. It then moves to provide guidance on how to conduct more targeted agri-food system assessments that go beyond the nationwide uh, national levels that are presented in this report, but how would one go about it to inform action? And it discusses the role of these assessments in implementing levers for transforming agri-food systems. So I will touch on these different elements here. So next year's report, as Delphi mentioned, uh, you know, will be uh, on the same topic. It will focus more on the empirical applications of TCA through case studies around the world. The case studies will include targeted uh, country-specific analyses that will help guide decision makers to prioritize actions. So specifically, it's about identifying trade-offs and synergies among possible interventions and policy options, having a, a more kind of systemic perspective. And so by having both editions dedicated to this topic, FAO is hoping to pave the way for kind of broader agri-food system assessments to be part and parcel to decision-making. Why? Well, because agri-food systems touch our lives in so many ways that we can't really ignore these hidden impacts. So, you know, let's be clear. Uh, the value of agri-food systems is not in doubt. Agri-food systems bring great benefits to us through jobs, food, and culture, but they also generate significant hidden costs that impact the environment, society, and health. As I mentioned, a negative effect all countries. This is across the board. It is essential that these hidden costs are assessed and valued through rigorous accounting, and that this information is used to reduce them. So true cost accounting is a systemic approach that brings uh, together the environmental, social, health, and economic dimensions. And its objective is to improve decision-making. So, but before uh, diving into the estimation of these hidden costs, it's important to understand why these exist uh, to begin with. In most cases, these are caused by market, institutional, and policy failures, whereby resources either are not allocated efficiently or opportunities for sustainable development are not uh, seized, taken advantage of. So these failures generate losses to society that are not reflected in market prices. And so that's why we call them hidden costs. Examples, water pollution from fertilizers. Uh, although it can be reduced with the right practices, it may come at a private cost uh, to farmers for which they have no incentive. So this reduces the quantity of safe water with negative consequences for human health and the environment. Another example from a distributional perspective is how many agri-food system workers are poor despite an abundance of profits downstream in food supply chains. That is another hidden impact of how agri-food systems function. 
To complete this picture are the hidden costs associated with unhealthy dietary patterns that can arise from the lack of information about the impacts of consuming highly processed foods uh, of low nutritional value or simply uh, stated preferences. So just, how do these different impacts compare and, and, and stack up? Uh, and how do we look at them in this kind of overarching kind of broad, uh, broad aspects, right? So this is what this report does. It, uh, it goes, you know, we examine the hidden costs along uh, the value chains from inputs uh, and primary production to consumers. So the all along that arrow, and the model used in the analysis was paired with Faustat data and other global sources uh, that contain data from multiple countries and time periods on greenhouse gas emissions, nitrogen emissions, land use change, blue water use. So these constitute the environmental hidden costs in green. Next is a poverty and undernourishment or social hidden costs that come about either productivity losses because of undernourishment or because uh, poverty in within agri-food systems, people who work within agri-food systems who cannot make a living, uh, and therefore what is what would be the cost to society to bring them above the moderate poverty line? And finally, the burden of disease from dietary patterns, which is in blue. So the new thing about this report is that unlike previous estimates that, that did exist on the true costs of agri-food systems, uh, this analysis were estimated, I mean, is done at the national agri-food system level for 154 countries. So this is the first time that has been done for, for so many countries in a way that is comparable. However, because estimates were all monetized, uh, you know, they enable aggregation comparison on different dimensions and, geogra and geographical scales. Uh, so in this exercise, uh, both kind of hidden costs and benefits are factored in as much as possible. Uh, however, hidden benefits such as return ecosystem services from grassland recovery into forestry, for example, are expressed as negative hidden costs. Um, for that reason, we say hidden costs as a simplification. We also acknowledge that some benefits cannot be monetized, such as cultural identity, and are thus excluded from this analysis. So this analysis has some, some of the costs, but not all of them. This is for this for this reason that we call these estimates preliminary, and we look forward to improving them and do country level studies that are more in depth. So we find that agri food systems generated an expected value of twelve point seven trillion dollars in hidden costs in twenty twenty. So environmental hidden costs amount to about two point. 9 trillion, which corresponds to about 20% of total quantified hidden costs caused by average food systems, and uh, social hidden costs to 571 billion, and health hidden costs account for the majority of these hidden costs, uh, being more than 9 trillion. So this is equivalent to about 10% of global GDP. Per day, these costs are equivalent to $35 billion, or about $4.5 per person uh, every day. So these are, you know, we find that essentially these costs cannot be ignored. I mean, given even account, especially accounted for the fact that they're likely an underestimate since some things are not included. So we also looked at the uncertainty uh, around these estimates, right? And we find with a very high degree of confidence that agri-food system generated over 10 trillion in hidden costs, highlighting that undeniably urgent need to factor these costs into decision-making to transform agri-food systems. So uncertainty is not really an excuse for an action. We, there is uncertainty there about the exact estimates, but even accounting for that uncertainty, you know that the costs are higher than 10 trillion for sure. So we also break these down by subcategories. So I'm not gonna go into the details here, but the environmental category is the one that has the most, uh, the most uh, subcategories. Uh, and we see that the environmental costs, about half uh, are connected to nitrogen emissions, 
mostly from runoff to surface waters and ammonia emissions into the air. And these are followed by contributions to uh, greenhouse gas emissions to climate change for about 30% and land use change for 14%. So social hidden costs are mostly due to poverty and a much smaller part to undernourishment. And these are more relevant in low income countries that we will see. And then health costs represent a large majority of human costs and are based on losses in productivity from unhealthy dietary patterns. So the costs of treatment are already part of the economy and therefore are not included in these hidden costs. These are hidden costs that are uh, losses in productivity. So uh, however, aggregating the hidden costs at the global level hides important variation across the income levels of countries. Uh, and these the countries are key decision makers in reducing these costs. So this figure uh, breaks down the hidden cost by main category and country income group. Uh, and it shows how hidden costs differ not only in their magnitude, but also in their composition. So the first observation is that most hidden costs are generated in upper middle income and high income countries. Those are the two lower bars. Second, that lower middle income countries account for about 22%, while low income countries make up only 3% of those hidden costs. In all country groups, apart from the low-income countries, productivity losses from dietary patterns are the most significant contributor to every food system damages. So now this might give the impression that hidden costs are a problem only in high-income countries. However, the perspective changes if you look at hidden costs uh, uh, relative to GDP, which is, where market transactions are included. And this is the second figure here, right? Comparing the cost to GDP gives a sense of the burden of these hidden costs placed on national economies. And the story is inverted. As a share of GDP, the costs are relatively much higher in low-income countries at an average of 27%, uh, in large part driven by poverty and undernourishment, which is that orange band uh, in the upper bar. So the ratio of hidden costs to GDP is 12% and 11% in lower and upper middle income countries. Uh, and uh, social hidden costs are relevant still for lower middle income countries, not so much for upper middle income countries. And in high income countries, the ratio of all quantified hidden costs is about 8%, the majority of which are unhealthy dietary patterns. So the narrative changes quite a bit depending on whether you look at absolute costs or relative to the size of the economy. Uh, and it shows that this is not just a high income, rich country problem, uh, but that in low income countries, this is a big issue and it's very much linked to poverty and undernourishment. So the national level estimates that we presented are, are you know, preliminary and serve a purpose of really of awareness building, right? We can go a step further with TCA to carry out more targeted analysis, which can further help set priorities for change. And, going into the specifics of what should be changed. So the scope of TCA analyses can be adjusted based of, of the needs of the decision makers. So they can be of a unit of analysis of agri food systems or dietary patterns, focus on investments or organizations or specific products and value chains. So these targeted TCA analysis also allow us to explore scenarios for change. In doing so, we can identify trade-offs and synergies among possible interventions and management options. So target TC analysis can really contribute to assess policies before and after they're put in place with scenario assess. So, and here I'm approaching uh, the end of the presentation. Uh, as I mentioned, this is geared towards favoring action and addressing these hidden costs. So the end goal is that it helps inform decisions. So, uh, and decisions happen all across agri-food systems, and we can consider these as levers for agri-food systems transformation. So, for example, agri-food supply chains are influenced by trade and market interventions, fiscal subsidies, uh, laws and regulations that we see there on, on the left, uh, and public and private capital. Uh, likewise, food consumption is influenced by various levers, including those that affect consumers' pocketbooks, and those that influence food purchasing decisions. And finally, kind of the general services and support to public goods, such as public investments through research and development, 
R&D and infrastructure that affect the functioning of the food systems can also be influenced, right? So these levers are not new, but could be differently employed or realigned to better support the transition to sustainable agri food systems. So the actors involved in this transformation is really everyone, right? And you have government, you have research and civil society organizations, you have business and financial institutions. So just for the sake of illustration, you can see that with the yellow dots, and governments have a major role pretty much in all levers uh, through different mechanisms, right? Uh, but also with here the green dots, that right, research and civil society organizations are also influential in terms of laws and regulations, consumer influencing and advancing of kind of general services. And finally, the business and financial institutions uh, have a very important role. I mean, agri-food systems are essentially uh, a private sector enterprise of all along the value chains. So especially private capital is a very important element in terms of uh, how investments are guided uh, towards uh, more sustainable agri-food systems. So, uh, so what does addressing these hidden costs imply? Uh, well, there is a concern among consumers and policymakers about what will happen to food prices. Now, we have just seen that there are many different levers that can affect change. So this was meant to convey that addressing the root causes of hidden costs is more than simply passing these hidden costs on to either producers or consumers. It is part of a structural process of agri-food systems transformation that aims to reduce these costs uh, in the long run. So the point we need to make is that uncovering the true cost of food need not imply overall higher food prices. So for certain foods, such as environmentally strained or highly processed foods, prices might go up. Uh, others, uh, prices might go down for nutritious and whole foods. So the bottom line really is that better policies and investments in more sustainable agri-food systems can reduce hidden costs without increasing families' expenditure on food. So we shouldn't be afraid of regressing hidden costs. So uh, and this is my last slide, uh, taking into account hidden costs and benefits of agri-food system is really critical uh, to FAO's vision of transition to more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food systems. The findings of the SOFA report are clear. I mean, the global cost of an action is very high. The fact that they are hidden does not make these costs any less real, and they are substantial in all countries. So to build momentum for action, concrete examples of how assessments of impacts of agri-food systems can affect change are required, particularly in data and resource constraint contexts. So FAO aims to mobilize resources to scale up these type of assessments and build momentum and engagement among members and all stakeholders shaping future policymaking. So this commitment is expressed by these two consecutive editions of the State of Food and Agriculture report, uh, but also to uh, other work that is ongoing uh, inside FAO on the assessment of agri-food systems. So the ambition of these parallel streams of work is to catalyze and action and transformation uh, by providing concrete examples of how targeted assessments can affect uh, transformational change. So thank you for listening, and we hope that this report, which is just a starting point uh, to look at these hidden costs and uh, take action, starts to build this momentum and inspires all to take kind of meaningful actions that will steer our food systems uh, towards greater sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Andrea. It was good to have you uh, as the lead author of uh, this report. And thank you for presenting the main messages of this new edition of the SOFA. Uh, in particular, you explained that many costs are not, not included uh, in market prices and why this hidden cost exists throughout the value chain. Uh, you showed us also some of the results obtained at the global level and the different impacts on countries at different income levels and also the levels of influence. So thank you very much. And now we can move into more details on the Swiss uh, case study, a way of addressing true costs in a recognized international methodology framework. And I would like to give the floor to Mr. Alvin Cox for his presentation. Please, Alvin, you have the floor. 
thank you very much, a Delphin. It's really a pleasure a, to be with you a, today at the Geneva launch of a, of this flagship report of FAO. I will probably talk a little bit about not so much about Swiss results, but about why sulfur twenty three on true costs a, is important to a my my office uh, there we all know there is a need a uh, to transform food systems in order to achieve a uh, sustainable development goals to help keep a uh, climate change within the limits of the paris agreement and to make our food systems more resilient current food systems do not adequately address the environmental and health costs related to food production or food consumption. These hidden costs need to be taken into account if you if you want to transform a, our food systems efficiently. Switzerland recognizes the need to accelerate food systems transformation towards sustainability. Both the legislature and the executive branch are working on it. Redesigning public policy and repurposing public support will be key to make the transformation happen. True cost accounting will be an important tool to get the repurposing right. We congratulate FAO for having taken up this important issue and lead the way towards how to deal with it. The Swiss Federal Council, which is our executive branch, issued a report last year on the future orientation of agriculture policy. The report provides a vision for 2050 and defines the most important steps for reforming our food system. It embraces a food systems approach and aims to create stronger links between food production and food consumption. The federal government uh, proposes to work on true costs and use true cost analysis of food to increase transparency related to that. The parliament welcomed this strategy and requested that we develop a dispatch of law to be presented to parliament in 2027 to put the strategy of the federal council into place. So we have a very solid basis to work on true costs of food in Switzerland. This is important as transforming food systems is a whole of society task and all branches and level of government but also industry, farming, research, and civil society at large need to be on board. Limited market transparency and insufficient considerations of externalities are disincentives to sustainable, healthy, and animal welfare-friendly purchasing a behavior. It is important to ensure that consumers have access to relevant information consumers next to policymakers, of course. Currently, my colleagues here in Capital undertake in-depth work to better embrace hidden costs in our policy instruments. This starts by developing understanding of true cost of the Swiss food system and will lead into the development of appropriate policy tools, such as fostering transparency throughout the supply chain, incentive mechanisms, and the like. But we are uh, only at the very beginning of this process. Switzerland imports about half of the food that, is, uh, that its population consumes. Therefore, true cost accounting has to take into account these cross-border relations. We believe true cost accounting has to be done objectively and in a non-discriminatory manner as trade is concerned. This analysis is done best within an internationally recognized analytical framework. This is why the work of FAO is so important. It looks at the hidden costs across countries in a coherent and comparative manner. We very much welcome, therefore, SOFA 23. It provides such a wealth of insight and, many, uh, and the many background papers add to this. The report forms an important foundation for future work and is a wonderful opportunity for further collaboration. Switzerland will base its true cost accounting on this report. We are proud to be collaborating with FAO in the framework of the next SOFA, so SOFA 24 report. We work together on a country case study uh, on hidden costs and benefits of the Swiss food uh, system. For this case uh, study, 
FAO and my office, the Federal Office for Agriculture, are working with the lead scientists from the Research Institute FIBL. We will build on the results of SOFA 23 and drill further down in Switzerland's context by, by for example, adding country-specific data. The aim of the case study is to identify the most pressing challenges and opportunities for the Swiss agri-food system in terms of hidden costs. It will also provide recommendations for potential entry points for policy reform. An advisory group A, will support this work. This group is composed A, of scientists and experts from all different kinds of horizons and expertise such as public health, nutrition, agriculture, environment or modeling. Overall, we aim to get a deeper understanding of the issues and we hope that the results will foster a fruitful dialogue among policymakers, stakeholders and civil society, which will uh, eventually lead to the development of targeted policy instruments to transform our food systems towards more sustainability. We are very much looking forward to continuing our collaboration with FAO on this important and sometimes challenging topic. Again, we congratulate FAO for the release of this report. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alvin, for this very comprehensive and informative presentation. Uh, you showed us why SOFA is important for Switzerland and how it can help to accelerate the transformation of food systems and create better links between uh, food production and food consumption, and also how all uh, stakeholders have to be on board. It's very important. So we look forward to uh, working with you in the perspective of the next SOFA 2024. Now we move to the Q&A session. Uh, so please submit your question in the Q&A module. Um, so maybe first, uh, Andrea, um, we have a question on uh, uh, which reads as follows. So which hidden costs are included, which are excluded, and why? Maybe you can answer to this question. Sure. Um, actually, before answering the question, uh, I would like to thank uh, Alwyn uh, and the Swiss colleagues for the great support that they gave uh, to SOFA 2023, but all in terms of grounding it, right? Because I think uh, the report itself is a global report. Uh, and if, if you don't bring it forward with country specific work, I mean, it affects, it informs, but I think it, it doesn't, it struggles to bring action. So I think what, what we hope to replicate uh, more and more is this type of interaction uh, that we've had uh, with uh, the Swiss Federation uh, and with experts in the Swiss Federation to improve the results uh, because these results from so far are preliminary. Um, in terms of, of what is included uh, and what is excluded. So as I mentioned, greenhouse gas emissions uh, are included, nitrogen emissions are included. Um, as, I, as I said, I mean, there is, uh, we, we, uh, the, the report quantifies the level of uncertainty uh, in different dimensions. So for example, nitrogen emissions being incorporated in this type of analysis are quite new. There is also considerable uncertainty. That's why, for example, we see that the cost, the environmental cost uh, that is reported in, uh, in SOFA 2023, the bounds of uncertainty are quite high for the environmental side, less so, for example, for the, for the, for the social side. That is, is quite well known in terms of because of measurement. Uh, and also, uh, because some of these environmental costs are very localized, so it's also more complicated to figure out what these all impacts are. So that's uh, um, that's in terms of what's included, and the fact that even in what's included, there is some uncertainty that we try to take into account. Um, we take into account uh, water use and land use transitions. So uh, deforestation uh, comes uh, as a biodiversity cost, but reverting back uh, from uh, grassland to forest brings biodiversity benefits on average. Um, what is excluded? We don't have pesticide exposure. Uh, 
we don't have the impact on pollinators of uh, pesticides. So there is both a health side and in how an agri-food system functions uh, because the role of pollinators is a very important one. Uh, we don't look at specifically at land degradation. Um, we don't have anything about antimicrobial resistance and the impact that has, zoonotic diseases, consumption of unsafe food. So in these different dimensions, there are a number of different hidden costs. Even when we look at uh, unhealthy dietary patterns, that is specifically about non-communicable diseases linked to obesity. So, uh, for example, if we don't look at the lack of micronutrients. So there are a number of, of elements uh, that, are, that are missing there, and therefore these estimates are to be considered conservative. Um, yes, and, and so... Uh, there are also uh, hidden benefits on cultural identity, for example, that we are unable to capture and monetize. And, and this is one thing that I think is interesting of going from this uh, global perspective that tries to compare and monetize to going to national studies that true cost accounting doesn't require that you actually give a monetary value to everything, right? It is more of an approach to try and take into consideration what is important to the stakeholders. So it's it's useful if one can monetize it, but there are things that you know, one may be uncomfortable uh, or uh, not capable to monetize, and they can still be taken into account in these more detailed studies where you're thinking about actions and what will have, what will be the impact, looking at trade-offs in a way that is not necessarily in, in dollar terms. Thank you, uh, Andrea. And in the chat on the same topic, we have a remark from Lorenza Yakia, uh, who uh, said that among the levers that are mentioned, she suggests adding developing and implementing transparent and informative food standards, particularly for novel products. I don't know if you want to, to have a, if you have a short reaction on that. Well, it, it is definitely a, an important lever, right? I mean, it, and I think uh, depending on 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 what uh, what is the objective, right? Uh, but looking at uh, food standards, be they or, or you know voluntary guidelines, uh, so it, it ranges from the regulation to voluntary guidelines to labeling. Uh, especially uh, on the consumer side, it can have a big, big, Im big impact uh, potentially, right? Because one of the things also that we don't know is, I mean, we have identified how big these costs are, but not how much it would cost to reduce them. I mean, if one moves to abate these costs, these hidden costs, one has to take actions, and some of the actions may may be costly. So uh, I think we uh, hope in the next uh, SOFA to go into more detail on the different levers. And so looking at food standards uh, would definitely be something that is of interest in, in, in going forward. Thank you, Andrea. Um, an additional question. Uh, could you provide examples of countries that have undertaken a true cost accounting analysis? And what do you think um, stopping more governments and businesses from undertaking this TCA analysis? So countries that have done uh, true cost accounting exercises, it's mostly through the TEAB agri-food. TEAB stands for the, uh, the, econ uh, the Economics of Environment and Biodiversity. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, under UNEP. It has a long, pretty long tradition. Uh, and it developed an agri-food component, which is more recent, right? And they've done studies in Indonesia uh, with the Ministry of, of uh, National Development and Planning, which is in Bapinas. Uh, requested a science-based policy advice for food system policies, looking at agroforestry and cocoa. Uh, and that was kind of a, you know, it, it led to the inclusion of agroforestry um, and for the first time in Indonesia's kind of mid-term national development plan. So that's a case of a targeted assessment, uh, which provided 
insight to policymakers, and it made it into the midterm national development plan. Um, in Kenya, there was a TC analysis on traditional use of forests and food systems in the greater Mao uh, catchment area. Uh, and policymakers from the ministry, uh, from the ministries stated that the analysis will inform kind of again country development plans. So there, there is movement and it is, it has been following uh, kind of, uh, you know, there have been examples in Colombia, in Thailand, in China, in India. Uh, they will be focusing on organic farming and agroforestry. I think in Thailand, they were looking at organic rice uh, and how it would reduce hidden costs. Um, also on the business side, there, the, there's a TEAB agri-food business element, which tries to work with businesses. And I think they're working in like seven countries, uh, Brazil, China, India, um, I think Indonesia, maybe Mexico, uh, Thailand. Um, and so these are to adjust agribusiness models by supporting them to understand and manage risks and dependencies on nature, essentially. So there is uh, these entry points that can be quite different. Uh, in terms of, of what is stopping governments from, uh, from doing more TCA, I would break it into kind of two you know, big things. One is evidence. Uh, so, you know, there's a lack of, kind of sufficient data and information to uh, to really, uh, in a short uh, manner, to kind of prepare a true cost accounting analysis, or at least that is the concern. Um, and there's also uh, limited information on the cost of policy change. So, okay, you find out what the hidden costs are, but what's the cost of, of, of changing? So you have to look, go into scenario analysis. So there's, there's an element there that you need to invest some resources uh, to do true cost accounting. Um, also figuring out what indicators to use, right? I mean, that's, uh, that's also on the evidence side. And then I think there's a, there's a more kind of, uh, you know, Political and 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 uh, uh, aspect, which is uh, you know resistance to change, uh, addressing hidden costs can require significant changes to current production and consumption practices, and um, so adoption of these measures is is, is not certain, uh, and they may meet resistance from uh, governments, but also businesses, from producers, consumers. Consumers don't like to be told what they can or cannot eat. For example, despite the health costs being very, very high in in in, in, uh, in middle income and high income countries, so that's just one example. Uh, but also trade offs, right? I mean, I think it, it helps to figure out what the trade offs are, but it doesn't resolve how to address those trade offs. So, using agrochemicals can improve increase production and reduce poverty, but also may lead to ecological uh, damages. So. It, it it forces some choices that you want. Um, and then I think also concern about distributional impacts, the concern about prices, about the most vulnerable uh, being affected by any price increases. Now, as I was pointing out, our view is that uh, it's a more structural process. So it's not just about passing on these costs to somebody. It's about changing how the systems function. Um, so I think those are the two main things. I mean, one is kind of a, the obstacle of, of kind of building that evidence that is, you know, because you are trying to look at these different dimensions in, in, in one go, uh, kind of the environmental, the health, the social, and the other is kind of resistance to change. Uh, and that's where we're hoping to, just by familiarizing people with these hidden costs, it becomes more of a norm to understand what they are and that we need to make decisions based on taking them into account. Thank you very much, Andrea. Alvin, I don't know if you have, uh, you want to provide some additional reflection, if you want to react. Yeah, <clears throat> happy to do so. I, I think in, indeed uh, what, at least what you can do with a true count a, 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 a analysis is to make hidden costs a transparent. That doesn't yet give you a guarantee. Then what what, what they are you doing a, a about uh, about this? And I think that's what you're going to see also in, in Switzerland, where where if we go through this exercise now and, and provide more transparency, it's then another an, a, a next step <clears throat> to say okay, what kind of policy 
instruments do we develop or apply? What are the changes based on that uh, true cost uh, uh, accounting? So I think these are these two steps, but I think it's it's important to indeed look at these hidden costs. If you want to uh, stay within the limits of of one of, of the Paris a, a Agreement and climate change, there is no way around a transforming the food systems. So, and you try to better do it in a, a in a holistic, in a systemic way, because it's not everything that relates to hidden costs is actually doable or, or related to how you produce. It is also related to the way how you consume. And I think you need to you need to get this broader picture and and, and the framework that a FAO provides offers here allows you to, to actually do that. But then the big question, for example, you see in the in the Swiss hidden costs, there is a huge a chunk on health costs a, a, a related to food. How do you change a consumer behavior and what is the role of, of, of government in that or of the private sector in that? I think that all needs dialogue and true cost accounting can provide you a good basis for these discussions that need to be that need to be had. Thank you very much. Uh, I think if there is there are no additional uh, questions or remarks, uh, we are now approaching at the end of the session. So I would like to close the Q&A session. Um, and so if there are any pending questions, please send us an email uh, and we will follow up on those questions. And so now uh, I would like to conclude the session. So, distinguished delegates, participants, and uh, dear colleagues, uh, I would like to express our gratitude to the speakers who dedicated their time to be with us today. As we have today, this year's report presents initial estimates, while next year so far aims to focus on in-depth target targeted assessments to identify potential pathways to mitigate them. We have seen with the presentation of the Swiss case that governments can use different levels to affect the transformation of agri-food systems and improve the economic, social, and environmental sustainability of agri-food systems. And with that, I sincerely hope that this report will also serve as a call to action for all stakeholders, from political decision makers to private sector players, researchers, and consumers, and that it will inspire a collective commitment to transforming our agri-food system for the good of all. I look forward to seeing you in 2024 for the next SOFA on the same theme. And I would like to thank you all for your participation and wish you a very nice day. Thank you very much to everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.